All right, you beautiful nerds. Today we're talking about pulleys because when I was working on the WRX building the engine for this car, I threw on a fluid damper. I throw fluid dampers or ATI super dampers on all of my personal cars. Um, and it raised some questions as to like, why would you want to get one of these? Why not use the stock damper? Or why not even use a lightweight pulley for that fact? So today we're going to be talking about these three different types of pulleys and your car. Now, keep in mind that as we go through this, um, these pulleys are different for every single car, like older V8 style American muscle cars were externally balanced for the most part with what we call a, a, a damper, a harmonic balancer, you can call it whatever you want. Today's machining and engine building has gotten a lot more precise where you balance a rotating assembly before it goes in the car. So you, for the most part, you shouldn't need a crazy massive damper from the factory or OEM. But like I said, we're gonna be talking about all three of these today. My preferred preference is the fluid damper, but we'll cover all of them. So start off with your OEM pulley. Now, not all of your OEM pulleys are going to be dampers or any type of balancer. For most JDM cars that are out there, you don't really even have a damper or any material on this. Now, what these are, this one is from my 2014 WRX. It is a giant metal disc, obviously with grooves in it because it is the main crank pulley that drives the accessory belts um, with rubber packed inside of it. Now, over time, what can happen with the rubber is it can deteriorate, it can age, it can crack. Um, in some cases, you will see these fail from excessive use or excessive wear on them where the outer metal disc will shear off from the inner rubber piece, um, leaving the rubber piece still attached the crankshaft and the metal disc who knows where it'll fly off somewhere now with these oem pulleys when they do have rubber installed in them or when they do come with rubber packed in them typically they are quote unquote tuned from the factory to absorb a very specific frequency of vibration because you have to keep in mind the way an engine works is internal well an internal combustion the way it works is you're generating a ton of little mini explosions inside of this engine now from those explosions you're going to have resonation and vibration coming from that and that gets transmitted down to the crankshaft and at certain frequencies that can begin to damage things like your engine bearings it can put wear on other components and whatnot so if you don't have a way to absorb those vibrations which is what normally this oem rubber packed inside of these pulleys is for uh, it, can, it can cause excessive wear on materials way faster faster than they should. Now, like I said earlier, modern machining and modern techniques has created a way to balance engines significantly better than they were in like the 60s, 70s, 80s and whatnot. So for the most case, you may see an OEM pulley somewhat to this lightweight crank pulley um, where there is no rubber packed into it and it's nothing more than just a pulley. But for the sake of this video, we're assuming that you have a standard pulley and there's probably rubber packed inside of it. So we kind of talked about what the main purpose of this pulley right here is. And that is just to absorb specific frequencies and vibrations at that tuned range from the factory for your OEM setup. Because like I said, when a manufacturer makes these, they're making them for an OEM power level. They're not expecting you to make 1,000, 800, 600, even 500 wheel horsepower on an OEM damper um, just because they're not tuned to those specific frequencies. So not a bad option if you're looking to stay stock, maybe some minor bolt-ons you really don't have any reason to get rid of this thing keep it on there. The ones that we're gonna mainly be talking about now that we know what this does is lightweight and a fluid damper, an ATI damper. So we're gonna start off with the lightweight pulley here. Now, the entire reason that you go to something like this lightweight crank pulley here is less rotational mass. Obviously, this thing weighs significantly less than this. You have something that weighs significantly less, you have less inertia or less mass that the crankshaft has to spin or rotate. So in theory, by swapping to a lightweight pulley, you should be able to rev the engine faster. And there have been studies shown that swapping to a lightweight crank pulley will free up some horsepower and it will make the car a little bit more rev happy. Now, typically speaking from what I found in my research, I found that these lightweight crank pulleys will typically free up around five to 10 wheel horsepower, depending on your vehicle, like I said. And these are pretty affordable. You can typically get lightweight crank pulleys for around 100 to 120 bucks. Um, so for the bang for your buck, it's really not a bad power modification. I personally, like I said, I personally don't recommend these. I still recommend the fluid dampers, but we'll talk about these a little bit more. Now, something that you have to keep in mind if you are considering getting a lightweight pulley is the fact that there is no rubber. There is nothing, there's no viscous material in here to absorb vibrations from the engines. And that means that all of those specific frequencies, vibrations and whatnot, can contribute to torsional twisting of the crankshaft, which is what these OEM dampers are there to help eliminate. Now, torsional twisting, it's like, the, it's the twisting force of the crankshaft. It's like when you wring out a rag, think of it like that for torsional twisting. You're twisting something in a direction 
like left and right. So if you have a crankshaft and you're twisting it left and right more, that's going to put more stress on the crankshaft. And in some cases, depending on the vehicle, you can see some type of crankshaft failure, whether that's a crankshaft snapping, snouts cracking, things of that nature. So keep in mind with these lightweight pulleys, you don't have any material to absorb that vibration, but you are freeing up some weight and, in, and decreasing that rotational mass so you can rev the car a little bit more freely. Now sticking on the trend that every car is a bit different in how they operate. Personally, I'm a Subaru enthusiast. I have a lot of Subarus that like these cars. They're naturally balanced a little bit more than some of the other types of engines out there because you have opposing forces acting across the crankshaft plane. You're not having everything just beat down like, a, like an inline six, a V8 or something like that, putting all this stress on that crankshaft. So they're a little bit more balanced. So for the most part, you can probably get away with using one of these a little bit safer. But that goes back into what I was saying earlier. Do research on your own car if you are considering getting something like this. Now, when you're going out and you're doing research, if you should get one of these or not, you may see forms, you may see all these things. I learned this stuff when I was going through and doing my research on these. I, for the life of me, thought these things were awful. I thought they would just kill engines and I, I, was, I was wrong. I misconstrued lightweight crank pulleys a little bit. Like I mentioned earlier, modern machining techniques have gotten a lot better with engine building where when you're building an engine, you're balancing that rotating assembly prior to it going in. That means you're making sure the rods, the pistons, all that stuff are within a specification of what weight range you're trying to target to make sure that that rotating assembly is balanced. Now, like we said, early like 60s, 70s, American V8 and muscle cars like that, they didn't typically do that all that much. So they would externally balance the engine with a harmonic balancer, which we don't really see harmonic balancers too much anymore, but they are still out there every now and then. Now, when it comes to a lightweight pulley, I, if you are wanting to use one of these, the limitations that I set using lightweight crank pulley on is if you are a street car, it's an enthusiast car that you're just going out having some fun with, maybe it's your daily driver, um, your basic bolt-ons, you're not making significantly more horsepower than what the car came with from the factory. You're not gonna get any benefit of NVH reduction with these, but they're not entirely that bad. If you do wanna use one of these, for the most part, you're probably going to be okay using a lightweight crank pulley. But I say that with some stipulation. If you are someone who's trying to make significantly more horsepower than what your car came with from the factory, I would not even consider one of these. If you are somebody who daily drives their car, maybe does a little bit of spirited driving, maybe does like a little auto X or something along those lines, and you're not making significantly more power than what the car came with, you're probably going to be okay using one of these. Like we talked about earlier, lightweight pulleys will typically free up from what I found on average five to 10 wheel horsepower, uh, depending on the platform that you are in. For moderate street cars, you're totally okay to use one of these. For a high horsepower track car, I wouldn't recommend one of these. Anything I'd say over like maybe 20% power increase over factory levels, I wouldn't consider one of these guys. That's just personal preference on that, but you, for the most part, you're gonna be safe to use one of these if you're staying within that realm of a basic bolt-on car at that point. All right, let's talk about the fluid damper. The heavy one, the weight difference between these two is insane. Honestly, I'd say this maybe weighs two pounds, this maybe weighs six pounds. They're not light, I can tell you that much right now. They're definitely heavier than the OEM balancer too, but there's a, there's a reason that these weigh so much. Now, alternatively to lightweight pulleys and OEM ones, the fluid damper and ATI are gonna do a couple different things out there. These will help reduce torsional vibration, which is that twisting motion of the crankshaft. They'll help reduce unbalanced vibration. So if you have, and maybe you built your first engine for your first time and you didn't balance everything properly, these will help clean up some of the vibrations. I'm not saying go out and build an engine and don't balance it, but this will help clean up some of the, some of the vibration from weight imbalance across the crankshaft. And this will help with axial vibration. Now, if you don't know what axial is, it's like a front of the engine, rear of the engine, crankshaft going through, axial is in and out play, which some people might know as crank walk, um, older 4G63s, older Golf Rs, I guess, like Mark 7 early model Golf Rs, um, and things like that. So that can help with axial vibration, which can, again, put stress on your main bearings and a lot of other engine components, which you don't want extra stress on if you can avoid it. When should you consider adding one of these or why should you consider adding one of them? Now you gotta remember, when you start adding more things like fuel injectors, uh, bigger turbo, you start turning up the boost, intakes, exhaust, all this other stuff, you are creating bigger explosions. Well, not technically bigger explosions, but more fuel, more air, bigger bang. Now with bigger bang equals more vibration 
vibrations at different frequency levels. And you start to get different frequencies once you start to rev out a car farther and farther and farther. The higher up in the RPM band you get, the different types of frequencies you're going to be seeing. So these fluid dampers, these ATI dampers are going to pick up a lot more of that different frequency range and help absorb it in here. Now they call these viscous dampers because yes, there is some rubber in there, but there's also a fluid-like substance that helps to absorb a lot of that vibration that you're going to be seeing inside of that engine. In my, a simple way to look at it, if you're making a ton of power, this will beat the hell out of your bearings from your crankshaft because there's no way to absorb those vibrations and this will help absorb it. But like I said, this is not a bad option if you are still just a basic bolt-on car and you're looking to free up some cheap horsepower. Now between the fluid damper and the OEM one, you are gonna see a weight difference between these two. The fluid damper definitely does weigh more, uh, but there's a reason that it weighs that. It needs this optimal inertia weight to be able to absorb these vibrations to be able to save your crankshaft from being beat to hell by, by all of these different frequencies. And I feel like I've said frequencies a lot in this video, but that's, that's the main takeaways, frequencies and vibrations. They all roll. So the main thing I want you to take away from this if you are looking at different types of pulleys for your car, fluid damper, reliability, high horsepower, removes vibrations and frequencies at all different ranges. OEM one, if it has rubber packed into it, um, it's going to be tuned for a specific frequency range that's typically around that OEM horsepower level. Once you start getting like dangerously outside of that or like pretty far outside of that, this isn't gonna do much. It's gonna act just as a pulley at that point. It'll probably still remove some of it, but not all of it. Uh, lightweight crank pulleys, fantastic bolt-on mod for a street car that's going to make not a ton more than OEM power levels. Um, make sure that you do look into your own car. I would not suggest this for every single car out there. When I had my Evo, I did. I just do fluid dampers on everything. I like to play it safe. Plus these fluid dampers have a lot of other added benefits. Um, I'll link fluid dampers website below. They go super deep down the rabbit hole of like all the performance benefits you're gonna be getting from one of those. Um, as well as a couple articles over to lightweight crank pulleys if you are wanting to read more on them. Uh, but for the most part, you're probably gonna be safe. You're probably gonna be okay running one of these if it's just a street car, you're not making a ton more horsepower over OEM. You'll probably see an NVH increase from swapping over to this guy, but your car will rev a little bit quicker in theory because you have less rotational mass than otherwise would. So I hope that kind of Kinda, I didn't wanna go like crazy deep cause you can go like super deep down the rabbit hole with this stuff, but I just wanted to give like a general overview of these three different types of pulleys because the questions do come up every now and then of, uh, should I use, should I stick with OEM? I want a lightweight one, I want a fluid damper. And keep in mind the price difference between these two is pretty insane. You, a fluid damper is, I wanna say around $500 where one of these lightweight pulleys is around 120. So there's definitely a, a price difference. And I think these OEM ones are like 110 new or something like that if your old one like poops out. But I wanted to keep it super basic level I didn't want to go too far deep down into this because it can get confusing when you start looking at uh, the frequency ranges that each one is tuned for um, what exactly they'll do but I'll have an article linked down below to lightweight crank pulleys and both fluid dampers website if you guys are wanting to read up more on this so that's all I got for you guys on this one. If you like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button. Turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver sign, whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be, put it in one of these corners. No idea which one quite yet. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies. Woo!